Robin Banks was on his way to becoming the biggest artist from Toronto since Drake. But right before he had the chance to blow up, two shooters caught him outside a party and left him paralyzed from the neck down. And this is the wild and tragic story of how it all happened. Robin Banks' parents came to Canada from Somalia and ended up living in one of the wildest areas of Toronto called Driftwood. They tried to keep him out of the streets with sports, and for a while it looked like Robin had a real future on the soccer field. He was a star athlete and probably could have taken it far, but Robin knew from an early age that he wanted to hit the studio. He stopped playing soccer and started recording music as a teenager, but he had to stay on the grind for a few years before anything popped off. The first time his name started buzzing was when he dropped the track Don't Try Me in 2014. Robin's parents wanted to keep him away from the trenches, but in a place like Driftwood, it's tough to avoid the street life. Don't Try Me is a raw drill track, and in the video, Robin was hanging with a bunch of Driftwood cribs while dropping bars like, I got youngins ask for blow, killers all around, you ain't know, don't try me nigga, cause I'll bring gun smoke, don't take my niggas as a joke, don't try me nigga, you getting ID nigga, if you an op, you getting dropped, you getting IV nigga. The Driftwood Crips are one of the most notorious gangs in Toronto. They've been around for decades and are responsible for some of the worst crimes in the city. Back in the day, the Driftwood Crips split into two sides, uptown and down bottom, but they were all in the same crew and didn't have any beef. Then dudes from down bottom started beefing with another Crips set, so they decided to become Bloods instead. Switching up like that caused a massive split in the city, and the down bottom Bloods have been at war with the Driftwood Crips ever since. The cops tried taking down Driftwood back in 2007. They launched a massive investigation that ended with 95 Driftwood Crips getting booked, including the three brothers who were calling all the shots. P-Dog, Bean, and Jello have been running the streets of Driftwood for years, and the cops called them the three generals of the crew. It was a massive takedown, and the cops thought they ended the Driftwood Crips for good. But by the time Robin Banks was coming up, they were already back in action and a lot of the OGs were on the street again. And on Don't Try Me, he shouted out the set and rapped, around tigers, lions, bears, and apes. Rip a man half, that's what we do to snakes. And rats, we treat them the same. Load it up, cha-cha bang. Up top, Jane and Finch, I don't think another hood's the same. Robin was buzzing off the drill track, but it's tough to hit the mainstream if you're just rapping about the streets and catching ops. Only a few drill rappers have really become stars, and Robin made a smart move by switching up his style and dropping party hits like the track Up Next. Up Next was a big change from Don't Try Me. The track had more of a club feel than his early songs, and it also introduced everyone to his catchphrase TT, which stands for Two Turn. Up Next opened him up to a bigger audience, and Drake even showed love by using TT on an IG post. Robin was always putting on for his Somali roots, and the next track he popped off with was called A Bye A Bye, which means Oh My God in Somali. He also linked up with Drake's Somali homie Top 5 on the track Hall of Fame. 2015 was a massive year for Robin. He went from being an unknown drill rapper to one of the hottest new sounds in Toronto, but at the same time, he suffered a heavy loss. In June 2015, a massive party was going down in an apartment building around Queen and Dovercourt. It had been raging for three days straight, but everything ended when someone started letting off shots and left two dudes dead in the apartment. The situation turned into total chaos, with people screaming for their lives, hanging off of balconies to avoid getting hit, and running out of the building away from the shots. Robin's homie Wasi was wanted for the double homicide, so he pulled a take K and tried to do the race. He managed to avoid the police for a month, but when they caught up to him, the situation ended in tragedy. According to reports, around 20 cops rolled up on Wasi while he was sitting in his car. It's not clear exactly what happened next, but Wasi allegedly upped his strap and that's when all the cops opened fire and killed him with a shot to the chest. Wasi had a lot of love in the city and he seemed like just another dude who got wrapped up in the streets and had his life cut short. When he was just 11 years old, he was walking around Driftwood and saw a dude who had been shot and left for dead in the neighborhood. And not before long, Wasi was going in and out of the juvie system. When he was 16, he told a researcher in an interview, if that judge thought I was a monster as he described us as sentencing, the world is going to see a monster when I get out of this hellhole. This place made me a monster. Wasi's mom said he couldn't get out of the trenches because he couldn't get back into school or into any of the services that help troubled kids reintegrate into society. Since he couldn't get the help he needed, Wasi went deeper into the streets and it tragically cost him and two other people their lives. His death had a huge impact on Robin, and a few months later, he linked up with a few other Driftwood rappers for the track Was Gang and rapped, Course Gang, fuck your feelings, so who cares if you don't feel us? All you niggas washed up, y'all be Wash Gang. My nigga's super sad, we be Was Gang. Losing Wasi was hard, but the track went viral and had Robin's name buzzing even more in the industry. And in 2016, he took it even further when he dropped the track Priceless and racked up millions of streams. Robin was getting bigger with every new release, and fans knew it was only a matter of time before he became a certified star. 
Boosie Badass has always said that rappers should leave their city as soon as they pop off to avoid any drama. But unfortunately, Robin stuck around Toronto and what happened next changed his life forever. In 2017, Robin went to a friend's birthday party at a club called Cameo Lounge. He planned to just pop up for an hour and dip, but he hung around for a while and stepped outside for a smoke break. While he was outside chilling, two shooters rushed him and started letting off shots. In 2020, he told Hot Freestyle that he didn't see him coming or anything, and before he could react, he had already taken nine shots to the legs. It was just like as soon as we stepped out smoking a cigarette, I let me in a surprise, right? That's about it. Really and truly, you niggas shot off my legs right away. Like, I took nine shots to the leg. Robin tried to drag himself away, but his legs weren't working. And the whole time, the shooting never stopped. He got hit a few more times, and the last shot went to his neck and hit his spinal cord. The shooters were two Jamestown Crip affiliates named Nicholas Roden and Rashawn Anderson. After the shooting, they hopped back in their whip and drove off, but the cops picked them up for speeding right after. They told the police they were driving away from the shooting, and that's why they were going so fast. But the cops knew something was up and decided to search the whip. That's when they found two guns inside and decided to book them right then. At first, it looked like the case was solved just a few minutes after Robin got hit, but the cops ended up letting Roden and Anderson go after they discovered the guns in the whip were actually fake. After Roden and Anderson were free, the cops didn't have any other suspects. But once they looked at security footage from the night Robin was shot, they realized they had the right dudes the whole time. The shooters were caught running up and letting off shots, then speeding away in the whip they got pulled over in. The cops put out a warrant to bring him back in, and Anderson decided to give himself up. Roden did the race and tried to escape, but it didn't take long for the cops to grab him too. When the news first broke about Robin Banks shooting, rumors were flying that he didn't make it out alive. Luckily, he managed to survive, but he's still dealing with it today. The bullet that hit his neck and spinal cord left him completely paralyzed from the neck down. Robin spent two months in the hospital recovering and learning how to walk again, and after a couple of weeks, he learned how serious the injuries really were. A lot of people would just give up after going through something like that, but even taking a bullet to the spinal cord couldn't keep Robin down. As soon as the hospital released him, he went straight to the booth and started laying down new tracks. He kept working with the speech therapist to get his voice right, and he's been dropping new music ever since. In 2020, Roden got hit with a life sentence, and Anderson went down for 16 years over the shooting. It's still not clear why they targeted Robin. Rumors say that Roden got shot by a Driftwood affiliate a few months earlier, and he tried to take Robin out as payback. Getting shot and left paralyzed might have slowed his career down, but Robin Banks never gave up, and is still getting hundreds of thousands of streams. He fought hard to keep his career alive, and now he says people message him every day, telling him how much he inspires them. You're an inspiration to a lot of people. Do I think that? I don't know, I guess so. Um, people message me every day telling me that, so. From the word of those people, I guess so, right now. His life will never be the same after what happened to him, but luckily Robin Banks fought through the tragedy and made it out alive.